the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening to all of those who are here with us physically in the church and those who are following us through live streaming. What a joy it is for me to be back after a long, long trip away from Sydney due to synodal uh, presence overseas and then staying a little bit away from Sydney due to the lockdown in other parts of Australia. It's always a joy to come back together, but we have to be still careful and not let our guards down and think that everything has been perfect. We still have to worry a little bit and hopefully soon enough, once we reach the 90%, whatever, the government and people in the official, you know, who work in the health sector decide that we can kind of let our guards down, then we will let our guards down. However, I would like to bring your attention to something that maybe because we're always humans, would come to the surface and suddenly we become two camps. Maybe something similar to today's gospel. When here John said to Jesus, but there were people who were casting devils in your name, but they were away from us. Do we keep them aside? No doubt you've heard it. Maybe you took part in it. These ongoing discussions of people being vaccinated and not vaccinated. Are these people good? Are the other parties good? And sadly, it becomes sometimes hurtful and knowing. Like people are entitled to their belief, whatever their belief is. And we are not here to judge people. A friendly advice, a brotherly discussions are no doubt helpful. If you're a medical doctor, then no doubt, hopefully your advice will have more weight than my advice. The only advice I can give to people, whatever the choice they decide to follow or implement, is that if they are followers of Jesus Christ, we have to remember that Jesus Christ came on earth to give us life and life abundantly. Hence, in whatever action we take in life, whatever word we utter in life, whatever thought we think about in our daily life, we are called upon to bring in life to those that we encounter and not to cause harm. As I said, we can sit down, discuss many things and say this causes harm and this does not cause harm or whatever. People with expertise are the people that we need to listen to. And at the end of the day, go back to our room, recollect, pray and ask God to enlighten our minds and guide us so that, as I said, whatever decision we decide to abide by will be a decision that will not cause any harm to the person I encounter. This is what Christianity is all about. Because this is what I said, our Lord came to give us. He came to give us life and abundant life. And we remember the two commandments. Love God from all your heart and all your mind. And love thy neighbor as thyself. And if I love my brother, if I love my neighbor, if I love my cousin, if I love everyone, because at the end of the day, my neighbor is not the one who lives next to me. My neighbor is not just my co-worker. My neighbor is not my, you know, teammate. My neighbor is not 
you know, a person who is down the street or down the road from where I live. In reality, my neighbor is every person when I realize and remember the words of our Lord calling upon us to even to love our enemy. Because we are all children of God. We are all created in his image and likeness. Hence, we do not want to fall into the trap of the old days that we also hear about in the gospel when people in the old days had leprosy. They had to have a bell around their neck. Wherever they went, people would say, oh, this person had leprosy, let's stay away from him. We are not in the game of discriminating. As I say, both vaccinated and non-vaccinated have to be careful. No one had promised that if you are vaccinated fully, Corona will not come and unfortunately had an impact on you. It's not my words, but this is what the medical field is telling us. Now, that does mean that we should run away from vaccination? No. There are great benefits from receiving the vaccine. But as I said, we have to remain careful. The corona is a reality. Sadly, many people are dying from it. If I'm not mistaken, yesterday I read the figures of 2.5 million from all over the world, or maybe more. I might be mistaken. And everyone who sadly got the corona, whenever you encounter one of them, hopefully you'll encounter no one of them. But if you ever encounter one of them, they will tell you it was as if they went to hell and came back. I'm sure there are other diseases that also people go through the same experience, whether you have cancer, whether you have bone disease, Parkinson, so many diseases, no doubt, are painful. But because now it seems corona has the upper hand, it has imposed so many restrictions, then we have to be alert. We as Christians have always to be the light in every discussion. Because we might be hurting a brother unknowingly to us for reasons which are unknown to us. How would I know what is the journey that you are going through? You might be struggling for reasons, as I say, unknown to me or unknown to other people between do I take the vaccine or I do not take the vaccine. I should be Simeon of Cyrene, hopefully to you, the person who might bring you to Christ so that you make the decision truthfully with Christ. At the end of the day, we have to respond to Christ. We are the children of God. We were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if we are truly Christians, if we are truly believers, despite our frailty, if we come to church to open our hearts to our Lord and welcome him in our hearts, and I do hope this is why you are here tonight, and this is why you come on a weekly basis, whether during the week or on a Sunday basis, you come to offer to God your produce, all the works, all the sayings that you have accomplished or uttered, hoping that they will please him. These are your gifts. And calling upon him in return to stay in your heart, reside in your heart, go with you wherever you go, to a restaurant, to a basketball game, to a music concert, wherever God wishes to be with us with each one of you here present at home, wherever you might be, he wishes to be with us. He respects our freedom. Should we choose to keep him here on the altar, he will remain on the altar with tears, but he will never impose himself. Should we wish to keep him at home and not take him with us to a restaurant to work, he will respect that. Still sadly, it's like when your mom says to you goodbye and you leave home 
or when your girlfriend or your wife or your children bid you farewell. You leave and they have an ache in their heart. They would rather go with you. Of course, sometimes they cannot go with you. But our Lord is always ready. That's why he said, I'm always at the door knocking. Just open. And we can sit down and walk together. And give me the chance. There will be storms. There will be storms. There will be challenges. I do not deny that. But if you just give me the opportunity to be with you, we will conquer these storms. And the vex, non-vex, is another storm in the life of our community, of our society, of the whole world. Let us, as Christians, offer the true example. This is one of the reasons that not only the Eastern churches, but the Roman Catholic Church, and I don't know about other churches, I think also the Orthodox Church, decided not to open the doors of our churches when there was just only 70%. We said it is not our responsibility to stand at the door and check if you are vaccinated or not. You're all our children. You are all the children of God. And if God has welcomed lepers, people with leprosy, if God had welcomed people who are Gentile, who are we to say to someone you do not come inside the church? But as I said, we have to be careful and we have to abide by all the health and safety regulations. I do hope through prayers, through wisdom, and through care, the time will come, and I hope the time will be soon, where we would not worry anymore about these issues. But till we conquer these issues, I beg you once again, be the shoulder that the person you are chatting with, the person you are working with, the person who is challenged with these questions, Offer him your shoulder, offer him your prayer, so that he or she, at the end of the day, will remember that his or her decisions are not meant to please the premier, the prime minister, the bishop, or a doctor. At the end of the day, the decision they take or we take should be decision pleasing to our God. And we need to be humble. And as our Lord called upon the apostle in today's gospel, that you have to welcome one of these children and be like the children. Amen. Amen.